Honorable uh, Deputy Speaker, this morning I'd like to make a statement on a very sensitive uh, topic, uh, sexual offence, sexual offences. As you know, Deputy, Honorable Deputy Speaker, sex uh, crime involves a broad uh, spectrum of uh, factors and issues, nor does it uh, differentiate communities. By its very nature, it uh, disrupts our norm and shakes the very fabric of our society. This is one category of crime that casts judgment on morality and values, values that are supposed to be the foundation on which a family is built. Sex crime should be everyone's concern. Honorable Deputy Speaker, it is the topic of uh, conversation in our homes, in our interactions, in sermons, churches, literally everywhere. It is on the political agenda of the Fiji First Government. The Fiji Police Force is working tirelessly to investigate and bring to justice sexual offenders. Sexual offenses range from indecent assault against a female or a male, indecency between males and unlawful sexual intercourse with a girl under the age of 16. Today, some children are not safe, even in their own homes. It's very sad, Honorable Deputy Speaker. In many cases, perpetrators are members of their own families. Often, the very people who are entrusted to nurture, raise, and protect become the abusers. As far as uh, the Fiji Police Force is concerned, uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker, there is zero tolerance to sexual abuse. There is also a no-drop policy, a no-reconciliation of perpetrators and victims in sexual or abuse cases. The uh, Sexual Offenses Unit of the Fiji Police Force, Honorable Deputy Speaker, specializes in investigations of cases that are sexual in nature, including those concerning women and children. In addition, under the Family Law Bill, strict enforcement of Family Law Bills and compliance to DVRO, mandatory child abuse reporting and restraining orders for children are followed. Further, the police, in partnership with other stakeholders, are involved in mainstreaming advocacy and awareness programs. Honorable our Deputy Speaker, our police officers are required to attend to sexual offenses within 24 hours. On victim visitation and support, there are ongoing programs of monitoring, counseling, case investigation, feedback, victims, and witness counseling for court purposes. State houses for victims and juvenile offenders are pursued with the Ministry of Women and Social Welfare. There is a mandatory legislative requirement to report and relocate child victims to secure and safe housing for, by, social, by social welfare. Honorable Deputy Speaker, there are helplines set up and 24-hour police and other stakeholder helplines are available for victim support, reporting and, and uh, referrals. The Fiji Police Force is using a multi-platform approach using the uh, Vanua uh, religious uh, organizations, youth groups as well as uh, women's uh, groups to address sexual exploitation and abuse in the communities. Honorable uh, Deputy Speaker, there has been educational awareness in schools carried out by the police officers during school visits. Uh, police officers talk about crime and sexual offenses to students during such, uh, during such uh, visits. Other educational programs in schools complement such awareness and advocacy programs such as citizenship careers, citizenship, uh, cadetship, uh, careers expo, family, family parliament, uh, blue light, scholastic uh, programs, and so on. The uh, Crime Stoppers uh, program 
call centers, uh, media programs like talkback shows, media releases, and crime prevention also add to an increased awareness and prevention. Honorable uh, Deputy Speaker, the, uh, under the Domestic Violence Decree 2009, a person who has reached the age of 18 becomes an adult. A child is defined under the Child Welfare Decree as a person below the age of 18, 18 years old. Sexual offences are defined under the Crimes Decree 2009 and uh, uh, Part 12, uh, Section 1 and 2. A sexual offence is when a, a person's consent to an act is not freely and voluntarily given. It is obtained either by force, a threat or intimidation, fear of bodily harm, exercise of authority, false and fraudulent representation about the name or purpose of the act, a mistaken belief caused by the accused that he or she is the person's sexual partner. Honorable uh, Deputy Speaker, in 2016, out of the 3,132 criminal cases reported where women were victims, 559 were sexual offences, which is 17.9%. Some offences have recorded increases in 2016 when compared to the previous year. The, off the offences include rape increased by 5.2%, assault with intent to commit rape by 300%, sexual assaults by 60 by 116.7%, abduction of persons under 18 years of, old, of age with intent to have carnal knowledge increased by 100%, indecent assault increased by 34.5%. Defilement. Madam Speaker, women who were defiled in the previous years actually reported the case this year by 300%, an incest by a relative. Madam, uh, Madam uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker, in 2016, of the total 1,226 uh, criminal cases reported on child uh, victims, 632 cases were sexual offences against children, which is 51.5%. A decrease of 26.3% recorded for male victims in 2016 when compared to 2015, while an increase of 0.5% recorded for female victims in 2016 when compared to 2015. Honorable uh, Deputy uh, Speaker, some offenses have recorded increases in 2016 when compared to the previous year. The offenses are rape, in, that rape increased by 20.7%, attempt to commit rape by 45.5%, uh, sexual assaults increased by 8.3%, abduction of persons under 18 years of age with intent to have current knowledge by 57.1%. Irrespective of figures, uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker, and, and statistics, offenses of any type against our children should not happen or be tolerated. Honorable uh, Deputy Speaker, the, uh, His Excellency the President, the Honorable Prime Minister, the Honorable Minister for Women and Social Welfare, and the Commission of Police are directly, are already actively advocating against <coughs> sexual offences and domestic violence in our communities. Let us all support their work because we need to work together to fight against this evil in our communities. As leaders and parents, we can preach and teach the importance of family values in our own homes. Our children need to see us parents, Honorable Deputy Speaker, as good models who value others. We must speak out against sexual offenses. Parents and relatives must not assume a child would tell that they are being sexually abused. We need to learn to recognize signs that a child is being abused and also how to approach to approach 
to appropriately deal with it. So often, we associate sexual abuse to violent rape. We don't recognize that very serious harm can be accused by many others. There are many other kinds of sexual interaction with children, including unwelcome and inappropriate touching, exposure to pornography, witnessing sexual acts, or even sexually demeaning and threatening comments. Honorable Deputy Speaker, we need, we need the Turangani Koro, village elders, community heads, and faith-based organizations to join us in the fight against sexual offenses. Cultural platforms like the Talanoa should be used to promote moral values. In some cases, when someone is uh, being abused, it just seems so much easier and less stressful to mind your own business and not to be involved. Honorable Deputy Speaker, however, the uh, Fiji Police Force needs the help of everyone, help from the churches, religious organizations, the private sector, uh, schools, and even, though, and even here, right here in Parliament. For guidance, for guidance, we look within the cultural setup to practice what should be promoted, and we look in religious books for lessons to guide us. The uh, Fiji uh, Police uh, Force, Honorable Deputy Speaker, is working in close partnership with other government agencies to attend to sexual abuse cases and sharing of information and resources is being undertaken. Occasionally, people believe that they would recognize abusive behavior if it was, if it was uh, happening. Yet, Honorable Deputy Speaker, harmful sexual behavior continues because adults were not aware that it was going on. The sad truth is that sexual offenses continue to live in our midst with children exposed to inappropriate and abusive sexual behavior. In the recent weeks, uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker, I've had dialogue with police officers, with the private sector, with churches, and with many ad advices. And we have looked at uh, sexual offenses from sociological perspectives, from uh, psychological viewpoints, from human rights, and also health perspectives. And I strongly believe, Honorable Deputy Speaker, that our, our values are degraded, and there's a lot of lip service. Little is done to leave the value we regularly say we embrace. The practices of love, trust, and respect. Barriers are broken, and taboos are removed in cultural settings. During my visit to Wanolevu two weeks ago, Honorable uh, Deputy Speaker, I met uh, police officers, and they raised their concerns that reported sexual offenses in villages and settlements were increasing. In, an, in, a, in a discussion in the provinces of Bua, Madhuata, and the Kondrobe, it seems that an increasing number of people are accessing pornographic sites, smartphones, and are accessible and affordable. People can, even children, they can access uh, porn sites on their, on their smartphones. Anyone, including children, can access uh, these uh, websites. To hear that there are a group of uh, uh, gatherings to view pornography is alarming. I also understand that there may be other factors to increase for increase of sexual offenses, but if police officers are raising their concerns from rural and isolated areas, then something must be done to address this problem. Honorable Deputy Speaker, I understand that to some the issue is about human rights and the right to do as, your, as you please in the confines of your, of your own homes. The uh, correlation between viewing adult sites and sexual offenses is debatable, but it is a issue worth exploring if you want to fully understand this issue. And uh, it, just a correction, uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker, and uh, some of the decrees that I had uh, mentioned before, uh, they are no longer decrees, they are now legislation, they are acts. 
uh, uh, forgive me for that uh, uh, mis misinformation. Uh, just in closing, uh, Honorable uh, Deputy Speaker, the painful reality is that sexual offences are increasing in our country. And the Fiji Police Force needs all our support to tackle this problem. Thank you, Honorable Deputy Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Minister. I now call on the Leader of the Opposition or designate. <coughs> Thank you, uh, Honorable uh, Deputy Speaker. I thank the Honorable uh, Minister for Defense for his ministerial statement. And of course, it's a, it's a big issue, it's a big problem, and we, it's worrying. It's uh, distressing, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, to see the increase in trend of sexual offenses. And um, surprisingly, the, uh, the uh, Minister for Defense, uh, probably uh, this particular statement uh, probably should have come from the, the Minister for, for Women and Social Welfare. But nevertheless, it's all our duty, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, uh, in regards. But there are two approaches. The NGO approaches uh, into this is mostly it's rights-based, educating the rights, uh, advocacy, as the Honorable uh, Minister had alluded to. The other aspect from the uh, Fiji Police Force is the, uh, the crime-based uh, uh, approaches they are taking in regards to their no-drop policy, and uh, 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 community policing, and all that. It has created awareness uh, into the uh, rural community. And there is also an increase uh, in regards to this uh, particular issue, in regards to urban areas, which the Honorable uh, Minister has rightly alluded to, given the technologies we have. But what can we do? Uh, there has been many problems highlighted by the, by the Minister. But what is the solution? We are trying to find solutions to, to fight this uh, moral decay in our society. And there has to be a certain kind of uh, evidence-based approach to the problem of gender violence. And this all comes about when people do not understand gender equality or being educated uh, in regards to gender uh, inequality in regards to, because these particular offenses are normally committed to women and children. We agree that children are no longer safe but what does the statistics uh, tell us? Uh, probably, uh, um, Mr. Deputy Speaker, uh, one of the areas probably if you had been following the, uh, the media more recently was the alarming figures that were published in the uh, Fiji Sun newspaper huh? and probably how the, um, the, the courts are also uh, finding it difficult to prosecute uh, the, uh, these particular cases because of victims, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. In regards to uh, how we can uh, combat intimidation, isolation, and control, these are other dynamic, uh, dynamic areas, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, that this issue is escalating to. And there really needs to be also a, uh, a moral-based approach on how we engage with the Vanua and the church, which the, 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 it has to come through a bigger, wider framework of things on how communities engage and how people can voluntarily come in and uh, report cases, which has been a, another problem. Another issue, Mr. Deputy Speaker, that was highlighted by the NGOs recently in regards to even police investigating, uh, in regards to cohesive confessions. Most of the, uh, the detained people are also subject to, to certain kind of brutality, which uh, also bring, comes into the picture in this uh, in these particular cases, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Those are some of the areas too uh, the Honorable uh, Minister for Defense can perhaps look into uh, in that regard. The other issue, more probably the administrative part, is the, uh, the laxity in our, the police in regards to statements. Most of the statements when it comes to court, uh, they, they are missing uh, in regards to how they properly manage uh, those uh, case management uh, systems that they should have. And it, this affects the, the trial proper too. Uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. On the other hand, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, uh, during from investigation to trial, probably how the victims are properly uh, kept in a place where they are, they will be able to give evidence more voluntary and uh, in a conducive uh, environment. These are some of the areas probably uh, we can look into on how to improve our systems. We acknowledge the effort so far, but again, it, the, the right message has to come from the right people. And the Fiji police cannot alone do this. It has to engage other stakeholders to probably combat this bigger issue 
which is uh, causing a catastrophe to our, to our nation and how we can improve on this to lower the figures uh, which is appalling uh, at this particular time. Thank you, Mr. Deputy. Thank you, Honorable Member. I now call upon the leader of uh, NFP or his uh, designee. Thank you, uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker. I thank the Honorable Minister for his statement. Uh, and uh, I stand to uh, support uh, the uh, initiatives and the efforts that um, his uh, ministry and the police force are trying to put in um, to um, uh, address this very, very uh, uh, alarming uh, trend you know, in terms of uh, sexual offences in our country. Uh, I think it is, it is deeply concerning uh, when we hear the statistics. Uh, and it appears to be um, the underlying current environment uh, in our country for which our most vulnerable women, children, disabled persons and the elderly are now exposed, you know, given, given the statistics that we've just had. Uh, and as uh, uh, Honorable Bulitabu pointed out, uh, I think uh, it would be very easy for us as legislators um, to rush to search for knee-jerk uh, solutions, um, such as harsher penalties and redress. I think they are very important. Uh, they, they ought to be part of the broader solution. Uh, but I believe, uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker, uh, we uh, ignore uh, at our own peril the deeper social fragmentation. And I think the Honorable Minister alluded to some of those uh, that are occurring uh, in, in our midst. And some of it, uh, or the lack of it, uh, is becoming a catalyst uh, for um, uh, some of these heinous sexual offences. Uh, of course, uh, Honorable Deputy Speaker, there are other issues uh, such as poverty, social issues, uh, emergence of uh, hard drugs uh, um, in our country. Uh, these are uh, important issues that ought to be uh, part of the uh, solution that we would be seeking. Uh, I would therefore uh, also ask the Minister, uh, when he is looking at um, uh, this drastic situation, um, with a national security framework, uh, and I think he is right. You know, uh, we we need to also look at it from a sociological framework uh, and understand uh, that uh, laws, uh, penalties, are not necessarily complementary to what might be happening uh, within the uh, within the society with respect to other issues. So uh, uh, we we. We need to understand that, and, and I agree with him, and I, and I think that we need to make this call to uh, our religious and faith-based organizations uh, to take more interest uh, in educating our people, uh, in raising the understanding uh, of these issues, uh, which may not be directly uh, sexual offenses, but those that are uh, around uh, those, those offenses and that may uh, aid and abet uh, the, the, um, the occurrence of such uh, offences in the, in the country. So really I, I think um, um, we need to look at, uh, together with the uh, law, we need to look at other innovative and perhaps uh, more non-traditional approaches to addressing some of this uh, alarming increase in sexual offences in the country. Uh, Honourable Deputy Speaker, uh, I think it also um, calls upon us as legislators uh, to, to um, amplify the voices of, of uh, not only the law enforcement agencies but those uh, such as NGOs which are involved uh, in creating that awareness, uh, which are involved in, in helping uh, the victims of sexual offences uh, so that uh, we can do, uh, we can provide the solutions as, as, a, as a collective group uh, rather than leaving it to uh, certain agencies or certain stakeholders because the problem uh, is, is alarming, uh, it's deeply concerning and the statistics uh, are, are deeply uh, worrying as well. Thank you, Dr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member.